We're now moving on to the next target, which has just taken me two weeks to complete here with the cruddy weather in the UK, and that is the Cave Nebula, SH2-155, a star-forming region about 2,400 light years from us. If we have a look at constellation Cepheus and we look at King Cepheus's left arm, we get a good look at the Cave Nebula itself here. And what you'll notice when you take a look at my image is there's another offset area of nebulosity that doesn't actually appear in Stellarium. Coming into the website Astrobin, which is where I upload my images to, we can see that it has done some advanced plate solving on my image. It's comparing a known database of stars to the stars that it can recognize in my image to work out which targets are in there, or deep sky objects if you will. On the left, it's saying that this bright orange nebula is Sharpless 154, and on the right, we have Sharpless 155. And now what we can do with that information is go into Astro Bin, search those targets, and see what other astro images have been able to produce. Why don't we take a look at some now? But when we take a look at Astro Bin, what's readily apparent almost immediately is that a lot of these images are red in nature. And that is because they've probably been shot with one shot color cameras or with RGB filters on a mono sensor. So yet we can see that he's got both targets in there and it looks to me like it was shot with what's called a Newtonian telescope, unless he's actually added these diffraction spikes on himself, but I don't think he has, they look legitimate to me. So you can see these diffraction spikes that have four spikes coming out. That is because uh, of the actual telescope being used. And we can see that the telescope that he used was a Sharp Star 150 Newtonian there with a focal length of 420 millimeters on a QHY268 color camera, which is why we're seeing that natural, actual red color there, uh, as opposed to the fake color palette that I've made in my interpretation. So this was shot with a ZWA2600MM, which is identical to the camera that I own. It's a monochromatic camera, 26 megapixel APS-C sensor, the Sony IMX571 chip, which is a very good chip for astrophotography. Cools down to about 35 to 45 degrees below ambient, depending on the manufacturer, and just resolves a huge amount of detail. He's got 24 hours of total integration time, and mine is 21 hours. He could probably make the image look exactly the same, if not better than mine. However, he's chosen to go for a more contrasted uh, look in his background, which is concealing a lot of his dust lanes. I, on the other hand, have gone for a lighter background which allows those dust lanes to show up a little bit more. So you can see the, the preferences in the edit there. But what is consistent across the two edits is that bright blue oxygen surrounding the cave nebula there. And then he's gone for a different hue on his sulfur two tones on Sharpless 154 on the right. What is remarkable is the framing is almost identical to mine. He's slightly more pushed in with his Esprit 100 ED there than my uh, Altair Wave 80. So he's at a, uh, a longer focal length, which is why he's zoomed in a bit. However, one of the benefits with a 26 megapixel camera is you have images within images, if you will. If you've done any terrestrial photography, you know that high megapixel cameras, like an R5, for example, if you're birding, give you that ability to crop in and still have a remarkable amount of detail. It's the same with 26 megapixels for Astro. As I said to you, there was that bright star forming region, the orange one in my image that doesn't show up in Stellarium. And I had no idea it was there until I actually framed this up with the coordinates from Stellarium in my capture software called Nina. And that was when I saw that other offset area and decided to actually change my framing to capture that as well. So let's go into Nina very quickly. When you go into the framing assistant here, you can pull the coordinates from Stellarium. We can see that just to the bottom right of frame where my mouse is right now, that bright additional star forming region that doesn't show up in Stellarium. So what I did was grab the rotation tool, moved my framing to be able to capture this and then repositioned the frame something like that. And that's what I ended up targeting for two weeks. It does sometimes pay dividends just to have a look at your target in the framing assistant because you might find that there are some extra details there that will completely change the way you approach the target.